Chapter 13 The Pedophile Pirate The second year of the Islamic era began as the first one ended. The opening headline reads, Tabari, Expeditions Led by Allah's Messenger. This was followed by, In this year, according to all Sira writers, the messenger personally led the Ghazwa of Alwa. A Ghazwa is an Islamic invasion in Allah's cause, consisting of a large army unit led by the Prophet himself. He left Saad in command of Medina. On this raid, his banner was carried by Hamza. He stayed out for fifteen days and then returned to Medina. This was the eighth failed terrorist attack in as many months. There are two interesting subtleties here. First, Saad, Chairman Mohammed's most fierce warrior, was left in command of Medina because the Prophet had become a warlord. And considering the nature of the Islamic world today, that made him a role model. Second, the religion of Islam actually coined a word to define an armed raid personally led by its Prophet. There's something very perverse about that. According to Wikidi, the messenger went out on a Ghazwa raid at the head of 200 of his companions in October 623 and reached Buat. His intention was to intercept a Quraysh caravan with a 100 men and 2,500 camels. This expedition was neither a military operation nor was it defensive, and it most assuredly wasn't religious. It was an act of terrorism against a civilian economic activity and the pirate was after booty. The Hadith reports, In this year, Muhammad set forth the emigrants to intercept a Quraysh caravan en route to Syria. His war banner was carried by Hamza. It also failed. The score was Muslim militants zero, infidels ten. Unfortunately, Islam would get far better at this game than they ever got at religion. Ishak and Tabari Ali and I were with the messenger on the Ghazwa at Ushera. We halted on one occasion and saw some men of the Banu Mudi working in one of their date groves. I said, why don't we go and see how they work? So we went and watched them for a while. Then we felt drowsy and went to sleep on the dusty ground under the trees. Muhammad woke us, arriving as we were covered in dust. He stirred Ali with his foot and said, Arise, O dusty one! Shall I tell you who was the most wretched man? Amar of Thamud, for he slaughtered the she-camel, and he shall strike you here. Muhammad put his hand on the side of Ali's head until he was soaked from it. Then he grabbed his beard. The Quran claims that the Thamudic nation was destroyed by Allah because someone hamstrung a camel. While it's odd that he liked camels more than men, there's a bigger perversion still in this tale of misplaced ambition. The Muslims were so unfamiliar with honest labor, they went to watch someone work. And they were so lazy, they fell asleep while they were doing it. Ultimately, that is why the pirates were there in the first place. When the bedraggled Muslim refugees migrated north, they became dependent upon handouts. They were physically able to do work, since they went off on terrorist raids, and the oasis town of Yathrib was a bustling agricultural and commercial center, so there was plenty of work being done. All of which leads to a conclusion. Something in Islam made the Muslims unwilling to work, and it affects them to this day. Islamic states have the lowest per capita productivity of any nations in the world. Islam politically and economically is as faulty as the religion is false. It's lose-lose. Ishak. Meanwhile, the apostle sent Saad on the raid of Abu Waqqas. The prophet only stayed a few nights in Medina before raiding Ushera and then Kurs. Let's review Bukhari's book of Makazi to get a better feel for what's happening. Bukhari. 
Allah's Apostle said, A time will come when a group of Muslims will wage holy war, and it will be said, Is there anyone who has accompanied Allah's Apostle? They will say, Yes. And so victory will be bestowed upon them. The Apostle said, Tomorrow I will give the flag to a man whose leadership Allah will use to grant a Muslim victory. I fought in seven Ghazwat battles along with the Prophet, and fought in nine Maghazi raids in armies dispatched by the Prophet. There was nothing spiritual about fundamental Islam. Bukhari I heard Saad saying, I was the first Arab to shoot an arrow in Allah's cause. I witnessed a scene that was dearer to me than anything I had ever seen. Aswad came to the Prophet while Muhammad was urging Muslims to fight the pagans. He said, We shall fight on your right and on your left, and in front of you and behind you. I saw the face of the Prophet getting bright with happiness, for that saying delighted him. Bukhari The believers who did not join in the Ghazwa and those who fought are not equal in reward. Allah's Apostle said, When your enemy comes near, shoot at them, but use your arrow sparingly, so that they are not wasted. Allah's wrath became severe on anyone the Prophet killed in Allah's cause. While the terrorist raids were hardly religious, religious symbolism and rewards were used to solicit and inspire the new combatants. Bukhari Muhammad led the fear prayer with one batch of his army, while the other batch faced the enemy. Bukhari, the prophet said, This is Gabriel holding the head of his horse, equipped with arms for battle. Allah's apostle used to say, None has the right to be worshipped except Allah alone, because he has honored his warriors and made his messengers victorious. He alone defeated the infidel clans, so there is nothing left. Bukhari, a man came to the prophet and said, Can you tell me where I will go if I get martyred? The prophet replied, To paradise. The man fought till he was martyred. There are no such bargains in Yahweh's scriptures. Killing is not an express ticket to heaven. Yeshua never asked his followers to slay anyone. The Messiah mentions killing only once. He tells a parable about a ruler in the final days of the tribulation to encourage his followers to be productive, not destructive. 